Oh boy. Uh, yeah, been a few day, a few weeks, but I am back. Um, welcome to your raw review for February uh, 9th, uh, two thousand fifteen. Um, last two weeks, decided to take a little breather. Um, I'm had some other stuff going on. Uh, just want to reiterate to those who, who watch. First of all, thank you very much. More like listen to us. Um. <clears throat> Thank you for listening. It, it's uh, your, your support is very much appreciated and uh, and loved. Thank you very much. Um, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, this one review, I'm I'm not gonna hold any punches. So there's gonna there might be a little negativity here and there. Please don't uh, draw into it more uh, more than it needs to be. But um, anybody who's a fan of something who has its share negatives, you know, you can only. You can only just say it's okay for so long. Well, one of the reasons why I didn't do the uh, review last week was because I tried recording it twice. And both times I could not get it the way I wanted to because there were a lot of things about it that were negative. So um, I think I've gotten through the bugs, gotten through the issues that were going through last week, had a lot of computer issues, so... This week's looking good. So, be warned, this week's going to have its share of negativity, but I will do my best to look at it as positively as possible. So, we start off the show with talking. Good stuff, I know. The We get Roman Reigns coming down to start the show. I said, okay, at least it's not John Cena or Triple H or Stephanie. Woohoo. Comes down to the ring, first two minutes, botches his line. Okay. <laughs> I have i don't know what to say on, I don't know what else I can say on the subject. I feel it's kind of redundant at this point. He, he just has to take his licks right now. That's all he can do. It's He's Vince's guy now. It's been very obvious that he is Vince's guy, but I'm just, I'm hoping and praying that with Roman, Way, Roman Reigns that we get some substance here. I would really like it if they can give his character a little bit more meat to it. And ironically, we kind of got a glimpse of that tonight. Then we get Daniel Bryan coming down. And I'm not going to lie, the interchange between the two felt very corny. Um, it pretty much felt like boring, typical, scripted nonsense. But you could tell both of them were trying to put some flair into it. <sighs> just it's it's getting old it really really is uh, the, then the authority comes down and they decided to uh, end the misery early at the 13 minute mark of talking and just create a tag team match between Daniel Bryan and Roman Reigns versus Big Show and Kane um, obviously they're using these two as their filler right now because we all know that neither or can't really have any of it is. Um, it's not really their fault. I think a lot of it is just age. And doing the best they can. Um, with Big Show, I'm just getting annoyed because his ability to no-sell anything is kind of pissing me off. I know the dude is big. But he can at least take a bump with a little bit more vindiction. Whereas I know Kane, he he's has like a lot of issues with leg, his knees, and you can tell just by how he's falling. The dude has problems. Uh, so the match itself wasn't anything special. Um, it turned into Daniel Bryan and Roman Reigns winning on a DQ, and Damon, Daniel Bryan went to hit uh, Kane with the running um, with a running leg drop. And ended up hitting Roman Reigns in the corner with the and ended up hitting Roman Reigns in the corner on accident. Sorry, it's uh, I'm a little out of it. So, and then we get the uh, authority coming down again while uh, Roman Reigns and Daniel Bryan are arguing, and they of course re reset the match for later on that evening. Daniel Bryan, Roman Reigns versus Kane and Big Show, except they also add J and J Security and Seth Rollins. So, how was the match? It was as good as it's going to get, considering the fact that Daniel Bryan is against people three times his size, all the matches he's had with Kane. It's really... It wasn't a terrible match. It was just... 
You knew, you knew it was the whole point of it. Obviously, was to set up something. So for the, what it is, the match, the match was a C plus match. So kudos to that. Um, kudos to Roman Reigns for what felt like opening up a little bit instead of just the typical punches and clotheslines. But again, you can only do so much when your two when, when your two opponents are roughly the biggest guys in the building. Um, pause there for a minute, and I just want to touch base on something real quick. I understand that the authority ha- is doing everything they feel, and I'm going to use and I'm using air quotes here. They feel to hook and bait the consumer. And the reason why they're doing this is because after screwing up the product for so long, this is what they have to do. They've made a lot of mistakes. They've had the same people writing the same lines. They've had the same people, the head of the company, for so long, and they've had they've they've been making a lot of mistakes. So the one thing I've been coming kind of a, an issue with, and I felt like it's been this way ever since CM Punk was given the reins to speak his mind, is that. Stephanie, and I'm and I'm calling out her on this. I feel that she is getting way too friendly with the microphone. Um, I really don't like the fact that every single time somebody speaks, it feels like she has to con- she has to put in her two cents. Um, look, truth is, this is a business where it's either talking or it's action. We don't need her witty retorts every five seconds. We don't. It's <clears throat> it's like the smartass kid in the room who's standing behind, you know, the parents shooting their mouth off. That's what it feels like to me. It doesn't feel real. It does. It feels generic and it feels phoned in. And with her, it's driving me nuts because it's like I can't listen to two people talking without her putting her two cents in. And she doesn't even have to be part of the conversation. She could just be off to the side and be like, be like, yes, yes, you could do... And, and half the time, it's her referring to something in the crowd. That's like, okay, you want to connect with your fans, then stop trying to put yourself on a... And try, stop, stop, bleh, sorry. Stop trying to make a platform where you need to consistently keep discussing it and consistently keep pointing things out. You're making subtle jabs that are not... And they're not actually subtle. Back in the early 2000s, back in the 90s, hell, even back in the 80s, it was they hardly even mentioned anything the crowd did. They never really brought it up. And, and the constant breaking the fourth wall is what is killing it. It's like, Stephanie, shut up. Stop talking. I'm sure you're a wonderful, heartwarming, generous person in real life, but my God, I know you play a heel on TV, but I am so sick and tired of listening to you talk. Anyone else feel the same way? I mean, if that's me getting upset because she's doing her job well, then then you know what? Good job to her, but it, it feels like it's so fake and phoned in. And the fact that she's, it's like, for it feels like everything CM Punk did, the minute he picked up a microphone and started doing his work, it feels like they're taken and running the ball with and running it into the ground because they don't know how to be edgy with it. They're acting like little, they're acting like children. They're acting like little teenagers. They're like the kids who feel like, oh, I've got to get the last word in. That's what it feels like. So, mini rant aside, um, opening segment obviously was to create some tension between Daniel Bryan and Roman Reigns, and it did that. So, kudos to them. Uh... Cut to a commercial, come back, we get Ryback and Seth Rollins. Um, not a very long match. Um, I think it was about three minutes long. And then uh, Ryback ended up winning via disqualification due to J&J security interfering. Again, Seth Rollins building more heat for the, for what it was. I can only grade it on what it was. It was a, it, Again, it was a C match considering that there wasn't a lot there. Ryback was on point. I feel Ryback is getting better. So, good to him. Seth Rollins, of course, everything was on point. His curb stomp was phenomenal. So, given the fact that this was obviously supposed to build up, again, some more tension, which will end up leading to the end of the night, was was a good match for what it was. He could have gone longer and was willing to, you know, more moves as opposed to, you know, just doing a three-minute match, then could have been better. Um, then we get uh, Paige 
against Brie Bella. Um, thankfully, this week we got a quality Divas match because lately we had not get got them. Even last week with Alicia Fox, it, um, the majority of the time, uh, Paige was on her back. And I know Alicia Fox is Alicia Fox is a tough person, um, but I've I've seen Paige like destroy fools in the ring. So, um, pretty good match between the two. Um, one more thing I'm going to point out, wait, as far as, like, connecting with people. I know people have, like, their mannerisms and their, sometimes even their words in the ring to get the crowd going. Like, I know Sting, all throughout WCW, he had his, he had his trademark howl, which I love. Um, <clears throat> but... Page screaming, "This is my house!" is getting extremely redundant, and I'm like, it, it's, it, it's one of those things where it's like you, you get like, you get so, what's the word I want to use here? Like, I'm just, I get so, I get embarrassed because it feels really phoned in. And she's like, "Yeah, you're told to say that, heart, aren't you?" And you can almost feel that way because when she says it, she can't look into one solid place long enough. And I can tell she's probably a little, a tad embarrassed. But if she's having fun with it, I guess that's cool. But to me, it feels really forced and kind of cheesy. But nothing, nothing compares to Brie Bella when she screams her Brie mode thing. Talk about phoning it in. This chick is so embarrassed by saying it, she can't even look at the fans. She stares at the ceiling. You, if you don't know what I'm talking about, look, look at the, look at all the matches. She's either looking at her opponent or she's looking at the ceiling. She's too afraid to stare into the crowd because she knows it's stupid. What's what's Brie mode to you? Screaming, running off the apron, and end up getting your ass leveled out? Sure, Brie mode. There you go. That's worse than this is my house. I'll take this is my house because I know Paige will level Brie. But... To Bree's credit, they actually had a good match. <sighs> um, I, I'm not having um, I'm not having the easiest time in the world remembering spots in that match. Nothing really stuck out too well. Um, I will say that Paige ending it with the rampage was a nice little touch. I hadn't seen that. I haven't I haven't seen her her submission finisher. Nor have I seen um, her page turner in a little while. So actually seeing her um, finish a match like that was actually nice. Brie was actually on point. She was actually hitting her kicks. She was hitting her moves. Um, better than what I've seen in the past from, from her and her sister Nikki. Um, uh, uh, that's a good uh, for Divas match. Non-title match. Obviously building up to fast lane. Pretty good. Give it a B-. minus. Um, yeah, the one thing I also couldn't help noticing, and maybe someone can shed light on this, but I couldn't help noticing that, um, Brie looked a little more bouncier on the way to the ring. Anyone care to, uh, elaborate on that? Um, <laughs> just, uh, just, uh, let me know. Uh, next, we have, oh, Rusev and Lana paying tribute to John Cena. The minute I heard this, and I'm like, didn't we just have a John Cena tribute night? The Monday night after the Authority came back into power. So I'm like, wow. They are really not proofreading this stuff prior to this. Or Vince McMahon is completely enthralled with the guy that he just doesn't care. I'm, I'm sorry, but that's, what, three months and two John Cena uh, attributes? So it starts off with Rusev and Lana in the ring. And they're talking about... Great people in the business, and we get a video package with John Cena. First, it shows all of his amazing accolades, and then it goes into all his huge defeats. They cue back to Rusev and Lana, continue to talk about how um, how much longer can he continue doing this. And then, sure enough, here comes John Cena with a, with a nice shiner on his right eye. I don't remember where he got that, if it was from the week previous. And we get... The uh, typical John Cena speech. Every time I get knocked back down, I get right back up. And of course the fans bought into it. And I blame Ohio for this. It's like apparently they're too win-hungry. 
So of course they latch on to anything they feel is like their their epitome of victory, and in their sense, it's John Cena. And it's just at that point, I I, I checked out mentally because it's like I've heard this speech so many times. And I know some people will listen to this and they'll say, oh, lots of other people made that speech. I'm like, no, there is a difference. People have made that, that speech more than once, but they will deliver it with character and a little and it's, and some and emoting different things at times so it doesn't sound the same. But with him, it's the same thing. It's the same thing. He all, It's always the same thing. <laughs> you might think, ah, when I get knocked down, but but Jack, I get back up. I'm, I'm like, dude, you need to stop. You need to stop. You're not the Reverend Al Sharpton. You need to stop this. You're not Muhammad Ali. You need to stop this. It's getting old. Credit to him. He puts he puts his heart into it. That's all I can give him. I will discredit him for not knowing how to to basically emote. Outside of angry and serious and the occasional passive-aggressive, which leads to him being angry and wanting to fight. I'm sorry. I'm not trying to be bitter crapping on John Cena this early, but it's it's the same formula. They'll point out how they'll beat John Cena, and then he'll point out, he'll either he'll point out the champ is here comment, or he'll point out, how he may get down, but he gets back up. Oh, I've been in serious fights, but I don't back down. I'm here every week. Blah. It's the same thing every single week. You can't deny it. It's the same thing. And to those of you who like it, awesome. I don't. So we get Rusev um, storming to the ramp or storming up the ramp to attack Cena. Those two end up fighting, and Rusev ends up laying out John Cena on top of the ramp, and that's your segment there. Um, Obviously, a lot of setting up tonight for Raw. A lot of setting up. And to their credit, they did a good job. Um, <clears throat> uh, positives that come out of this. Um, John Cena could actually bring some positive needed attention back to the United States title. Um, I'm not saying Rusev can't. I'm just saying that he isn't. And I think if they were to do more things involving that title, like, if they were to just, like, hint it at the belt having, like, uh, Russian flag colors on it or something, just something, then I could, like, they could have really taken this heel thing so far. But aside from him showing up in the ring and winning and him doing his promos, like, that's really it. You know, there's really not a whole lot there. Is he is he a good wrestler? I mean, that's debatable. I think he's had some good wrestle. I think he's had some good matches, but do I think he's great? No. Does it fit his persona? Yes. So, moving on. Uh, we get a repeat of last week. We get Bray Wyatt versus Dolph Ziggler. And again, these guys tore the house down with their matches. Um, one thing I am going to say in regards to Dolph Ziggler is um, I'm getting really nervous at how much he oversells his, his bumps because something tells me he's going to end up he's going to end up giving himself a uh, some a serious case of whiplash or he's going to end up breaking his own neck because I'm noticing how some of the times like he'll take some scary bumps off like you know. The mat outside the ring, and he's just like jerking his head viciously to one side. And I've seen people hurt their neck very badly off of much less. But no, none. Uh, moving on, these two had an incredible match. Um, <clears throat> Barry Wyatt's clotheslines. I'm sorry, like they, they'll bring down trees. He, like these guys, definitely turn up the intensity a little bit. And I'm very thankful for that. They had a match last week that was very good. This week they definitely dialed up the intensity a lot. Dolph Ziggler and his super kicks. Um, I love the uh, effort he puts, the effort and the energy he puts into his elbow drops. Like even the simple mundane things he loves to do. Um, I am getting a little upset as how there's really not much, there's not much in sense of character really to Dolph Ziggler. I mean, He's a show-off, but, you know, they don't really let him do anything with it. I mean, this is a guy who was, like, 
came off of like the huge Survivor Series thing, and ever since then they really downplayed him, and they pretty much just they pretty much just unintentionally buried him at the Royal Rumble. I'm sorry, but that's exactly what happened. I mean, when you come off of like an awesome match at Survivor Series, an awesome match at TLC, and then you come in toward the very end of the Royal Rumble, and you basically just get fed to the wolves within three minutes and get your ass hurled out of the ring. That's saying something, you know. That they don't. That to me says where they value him. And right now they're like not that much. Um, finish to the match. Uh, Bray Wyatt hits Sister Abigail on uh, Bray Wyatt. <clears throat> and uh, we get a shot of Bray Wyatt with a busted nose, bleeding, staring into the camera. Again, awesome match. This uh, gets a B plus. Um, no, no negatives here. Again, just with Ziggler, I think his overselling is going to start catching up to him real soon. I think the guy can do a good job if he's not bouncing around the mic. But, um, hey, man, um, I'll take it. Uh, we then we get a new day ver uh, against Goldust and Stardust uh, over the past few weeks. Uh, they have been uh, building up heat between Goldust and Stardust, and getting to that in a minute. Um, halfway through the match, Stardust ends up just walking away, and then uh, Kofi ends up rolling up Goldust for the victory. And then there's your match. We cut to backstage. Goldust refers to Co or uh, Stardust as Cody, calling he's like, "I'm not. This is not Goldust. This is Dustin," and uh, Stardust ends up pushing uh, Goldust into uh, a supply bin, I guess you want to call it. That's what it looked like to me. It looked like it was just carrying lights and two-by-fours and random pieces of wood. And then there's that segment. The match itself wasn't anything spectacular. The New Day is nothing that impressing to me. I think the concept would work great. If it was done right, it's not being done right. I think all three of them are just trying to do the best with what they have. Again, I'm I'm bored to death with a new day. The match itself wasn't anything spectacular. This is your solid. Uh, I'll give it a. It's your solid C match. Um, that's can't really say too much out of it. It really all it was was just story. More story toward. Goldust and Stardust, and maybe we'll end up getting a match between the two relatively soon. We will see. Uh, yeah, I'm just rolling through these. I'm not taking too much time to deliver on them unless I feel they need to be delivered on. Um, hopefully, my positives definitely outweigh the negatives. If, again, if it feels like I am being overly negative, I do apologize. Again, it's just um, sometimes you can keep you can only keep seeing the same thing for so long. And keep, you know, and keep just shoveling it under the rug. And that's the kind of mood I'm in. Aside from that, I'm having a great day. The snow has finally stopped falling. And I'll be honest, I'm I'm actually looking forward uh, to the next few days. And, uh, yeah, just, uh, <clears throat> just wanted to let, let anyone listening know. Um, no, uh, no negativity here, just pointing out. Just pointing out some things that have been kind of irking at me. Ooh, excuse me. So, we get Triple H addressing Sting. Look, it could have been real simple. This man has been involved in some of the shortest uh, um, in-ring promo work I have ever seen. He's been involved in some of the longest in-ring promo work I have ever seen. This falls into the needless, needlessly long, uh, needlessly long uh, promo, and I'm going to dissect a few things about this because this just shows you how little respect they have for other people outside of Triple H. Number one, Triple H is talking about, well, I've been for 25 years, and it's like. Really, you do realize Sting has been doing this longer than you, and the only re and he's only not been wrestling actively for like the last year, which is roughly about the same as Triple H. 
So I'm like, okay, well, obviously you're not doing your homework because the first thing he went right into was talking about how they destroyed WCW and that's why WCW is no more. And to which i just like to add that if they had competition now, the show would be of much more quality as opposed to um, quantity, which is a three-hour show where maybe a third of it is actual wrestling. And I say a third because we very rarely get an actual hour, not counting commercials. <clears throat> anyway, so all this is just leading into staying, uh, agreeing to a confrontation at Fastlane. Notice how they're not calling it just yet a wrestling match. They're calling it a confrontation. So he wanted a confrontation to have a confrontation at Fastlane, which tells me one thing. They're milking this as much as they can up until WrestleMania. So we get the lights going in and out for a few minutes. And then we get a, a Sting impersonator in the ring behind Triple H. The lights keep going in and out, in and out. And I'm like, okay, this is really cool. Shades of uh, WCW with Sting and what they used to do with him. And I was very excited about that. And then we cut to um, the Titantron where it just says, I accept. So we'll end up seeing something between these two at Vaseline. Will it be an actual match? Will Or will it just be a confrontation? Who knows? I think it'll be um, it'll be a confrontation. And what will happen is um, they'll end up, Sting will end up showing his, he'll end up doing something one way or another to get Triple H even more heated. And we will set up the match for WrestleMania 31. So the segment itself, if you could have trimmed off a few minutes of just Triple H just randomly talking his, his nonsense. And I just want to cut to something real quick. Um, WCW, um... They went under because of their deal with Time Warner. It had nothing to do with WWE, although the fact that WCW was a sinking ship after, uh, since roughly the late 99 and then after 2000, uh, yeah, they were in trouble. So, yeah, um, Sting's been doing it longer than Triple H. He's been doing it better than Triple H. Triple H is, um, I'm sorry, Triple H kind of had things given to him at a certain point. And, um, <clears throat> but that's, that's a video for a whole other time. Respect to Triple H given. Um, the segment itself I thought was very cool. I loved how they started, I love how they were playing with the Sting's music and the lights and the Titan Tron. I, I loved it. It was awesome. I wish we could have more of that. And I hope we have more of that. So, um, here's two more future Sting encounters. Um, Credit to the guy who came up behind Triple H in the ring and then just vanished, who looked like Sting. He actually, he looked like a pretty good Sting, a very convincing Sting. Uh, then we get Cesaro and Tyson Kidd against the tag team champions, the Usos, in a non-title match. I have said since day one that I would like Kidd and Tyson, or I'm sorry, Kidd and Cesaro together. Um, I think between the two of them, they can they have they will have some serious uh, quality matches, and they have not disappointed yet. I have a feeling that we're going to end up seeing a lot more than them than we think. The match tonight was very good. Um, awesome spots of the matches. Uh, Tyson Kidd and the Usos. Tra uh, one of the you. I and the thing is, I don't know him by name. You'd have to tell me. Um, the super kicks to Tyson Kidd kid were, were, were crisp. They were clean. Um, Cesaro's uppercuts in the corner were vicious as hell. Um, <clears throat> a lot of the match was, uh, was just control for, the, uh, for Cesaro and Kidd, keeping one Uso away from the other. And then we got, we got obviously over to the conclusion where Cesaro knocked... Uh, I think it was Jimmy off the top rope, so he so he couldn't fin finish with his splash, and Tyson ended up rolling him up for the victory, which again I think is going to set up, um, it's going to set up a pretty awesome match uh, between the two. Maybe at Fastlane we'll get a tag team title match. I would love to see that. I think Kid and Cesaro work pretty well together, and kudos to these guys for putting on a crisp match. Usos also did an amazing match. Um, my only gripe is I, I really think those two need, uh, the Usos need to really, they need to 
I don't know if they need to get smaller boots when they're in the ring, but I'm noticing they're having a much harder time clearing that top rope when they do their dive. And last week, one of them actually clipped the rope and near, and completely missed somebody and landed flat on their back. So, yeah. But despite all that, uh, good match, great match. This was a this was definitely a B match, a solid B match. Um, given the Usos and them have a little bit longer, would have been a lot more. So. Great match all together. I'm glad to see Cesaro actually winning. He's going to open up in the ring because the kid has got amazing talent. Uh, then we get Sin Cara versus Damian Miz. Now, I'm not going to lie. Um, this match, I was actually in the process of making something to eat, so I did not see the, the, uh, the, the lot of it. Um, they obviously set this match up due to last week's Miz versus Sin Cara match where Sin Cara ended up getting the, uh, the pinfall on the Miz, so they set this one up. Uh, going through notes here, um, again, Ms. Dell got rolled up with the, uh, got rolled up by Sin Cara, being prompted by the Miz, so obviously building up, again, this tonight's theme, building up, um, building up heat for something in the future, uh, could be a Sammy, uh, a Miz Dow versus Miz match. We will see. But the match itself wasn't anything that great. Give it a C minus. Um, it's only just because there wasn't a whole lot there to begin. Um, Sandow did his thing. Scar did his thing. It really wasn't anything too spectacular of a match. Uh, next match, we get Dean Ambrose versus Curtis Axel. Hashtag Axel. I want to see if it did try to be. Um, this itself was not a very long match. I think it was about five minutes. Um, pretty much. Um, it all led up to Dean Ambrose just finishing it off with Dirty Deeds. Pinfall, cut to uh, Wade Barrett. And they did a stupid little spot making fun of TMZ with the BMZ, the, uh, the, the bad news zone. And obviously they're working up to a possible Intercontinental title match at Fastlane. Um, really not much to say on this one. Curtis Axel did his job. Dean Ambrose did his job. I'm kind of upset I'm not seeing Dean Ambrose wrestle in higher quality, but I do think that with the Intercontinental title, he can definitely give it a lot more prestige than the Bad News Barrett. So, pretty mediocre match. Give it a give it a C. Again, there really wasn't anything there um, to it. I'm based off of who was given performance-wise and longevity. And for all those, they were kind of on the, the low scale. But just remember, just because it's given a low grade, uh, a low letter grade does not mean that it's bad. It means that there's a reason behind it. So it's either it's either not that good or it just wasn't that long. <sighs> and then we get the finale of the evening. We get Daniel Bryan and Roman Reigns versus Seth Rollins, Kane, Big Show, and J&J &J Security. This was as about as everyone was thinking it to be. It was supposed to this this whole point of this match was to was to generate more friction between Roman Reigns and Daniel Bryan. Um, I'm just gonna get cut right to the finisher. Um, um, the team of five obviously had Daniel Bryan in a pinch the whole batch. Um, Roman Ray, or Roman's got KO'd punch, so he spent a good time uh, a good time outside of the ring, and then uh, Daniel Bryan started rallying back, and then he goes to uh, hit Mercury with the running knee, and then Reigns uh, storms the ring, hits the spear, and they get the one two three victory. Those two end up fighting uh, Daniel Bryan and Roman Reigns, <clears throat> and it leads into. Uh, Roman Reigns spearing Daniel Bryan. Okay. The match itself, was it the best match of the evening? Um, that's hard to say. I'm going to give it 
And I'm going to give this match also a B. Uh, nothing of a, ma a massive quality here, but as far as longevity, this definitely went the distance. I think it was right on par with Dolph Ziggler and Bray Wyatt. Um, still a pretty good uh, show tonight. As a general, I'm just I'm gonna call it a. This, it was definitely a B or a B minus night. The show did what it was supposed to do. It's creating fast lane, and they're doing a good job. And I like it how they don't have to worry about elimination chamber this year. And that's the great thing. They don't have to worry about sticking people a bunch of people into one match, because that's how people end up getting forgotten and dismissed. And I, and I love the fact that they're going a different route. I think it's fantastic. The ending was great because it's like, I want to see something with Roman Reigns. I want to see I want to see some swag. I want to see the badass factor with Roman Reigns. I'm sick and tired of seeing Boy Scout. I'm sick and tired of seeing Good Guy. I'm sick and tired of seeing that goofy smile. You know what? You want to know what I want to see out of Roman Reigns? I want to see... I want to see a guy that takes nothing from nobody and he will lay people out simply because he feels like he needs to. It's like put some attitude behind this guy and you have something and you and you could have something really going. And that's exactly what they did tonight. They started off with <clears throat> these two in the beginning of the night when they started like, oh, there's some camaraderie and they're laughing at each other's jokes. And they're saying, oh, you can't, you're, you may be bigger and stronger, but I'm a better wrestler and... And Roman Reigns is kind of laughing at this with his goofy look. And then at the end of the night, just to see Roman Reigns just say, you know what, dude, don't mess with me. And then he just ends up spearing Daniel Bryan. It's like, thank you. Thank you. Give me some meat. That's what I want. I was, I felt like Ryback. I was saying, feed me more. That's what I want. I wanted to see some substance with Roman Reigns. I, I, he is a shell of a character up until this point. He's simply nothing than, you know, the ass-kicking machine. That's all he is. That's all he is. But I want to see I want to see some swag with it. I want to see him out of the shield gear. I want to see him I want to see him come, become something else. Cuz there's definitely some hardcore character within and we're, I think we're getting a glimpse of that. So to that, I say well done. Uh Again, the show itself, as I said a few times, was it's setting things up for Fastlane. And did they do that? Yes. Um, I like the fact that we're not getting Elimination Chamber anymore. I think that's a plus. Uh, if they're smart, they will get rid of TLC and just bring back Armageddon because I, according to WWE.com, they're again, it's going to be TLC and stairs again. Um, hopefully that changes. So, uh, th that's my thoughts on the night. Um, a lot of good. Um, there were a lot of stuff that was just passable and forgettable. Um, let me know what, uh, everyone else here thinks. And, uh, comment below. Let me know. Um, have any ideas as far as, like, WWE. Um, opinions, thoughts, things you'd like to see, who would you rather have the title, anything wrestling related really. Let me know. Uh, might, I'm going to start drawing ideas and turning them into topic discussions uh, at a later date. So um, yep, enough of all that. You all have a great day and I will chat with you later.